One of my patients' most common fears is, will I wake up during my surgery? Anesthesia awareness not only sounds bad, but it's actually rated as one of the worst experiences that patients can have in hospital settings. So for many reasons, we want to prevent it from happening in the first place, and should it happen, prevent it from turning into one of those traumatic experiences that can haunt patients for the rest of their lives potentially. I'm gonna tell you why some patients have anesthesia awareness or intraoperative awareness, and how you can help minimize that risk with all natural methods. And if you think you know someone who's had anesthesia awareness, leave a comment below and I'll respond with what I think likely happened. And to keep learning how to live your life more naturally and hopefully with fewer medications, both inside and outside the operating room, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and share what you learned with others. Welcome to the most secretive place in the world where you interface with the most mysterious branch of medicine, that's anesthesia. We don't really know how anesthesia works and some patients can break through anesthesia and actually wake up or at least remember things. Fortunately, anesthesia awareness is quite rare with an overall risk well under 1% and more like 0.1%. So first, what is anesthesia awareness or intraoperative awareness? When you're under general anesthesia, you're supposed to be entirely unconscious. Your brain isn't supposed to be forming new memories. If your brain isn't getting the required dose of anesthesia though, your brain might be too light and you might start forming memories and that can lead to experiencing anesthesia awareness. It's important to remember that you're not gonna be fully unconscious for all surgeries. My general rule of thumb is that if you have a breathing tube like this down your mouth, you should be unconscious. But there are many other surgeries that you're not fully unconscious for without a breathing tube. Things like colonoscopies, endoscopies, cesarean sections with spinals or epidurals, or sedation cases like hand or foot surgeries. In those types of surgeries, you're not necessarily waking up because you're never fully unconscious to start with. So I'm just talking about general anesthesia or when you're intended to be fully unconscious and not remember anything at all. Now there's lots of flavors of anesthesia awareness. Most of them are patients hearing things. That's likely because the hearing parts of your brain are the most resistant to anesthesia, meaning that if you're ever light on the anesthesia, the hearing parts of your brain are most likely to be online and to remember things. So patients will often say that maybe they heard conversations or they heard music, they heard drilling or hammering during their surgery. It's possible to also see things, but we usually tape your eyes shut, so it's hard to see what's going on. Other patients feel paralysis, saying they couldn't move during the surgery. That can be from some of the paralyzing medications that they received under anesthesia when they weren't supposed to remember getting them. Sometimes patients feel things, like things on their body, the surgical instruments, or sometimes things down their throat, like the breathing tubes. Some patients may feel helplessness, intense anxiety, or impending doom. Some patients report dreaming, and some patients report being aware, but not feeling anything at all, like not feeling pain and really not being troubled by it. So it's a very diverse range of experiences that patients have when they're aware under anesthesia. Because the experiences are so vast across different patients in different surgeries with different types of anesthesia, it can sometimes be hard to diagnose anesthesia awareness. On top of that, it might take more than a week after your surgery is over for your brain to even put the scrambled memories back together to recognize that you were aware for part of your surgery. And we care about that because there can be serious complications to experiencing awareness under anesthesia. It's not just the impending doom, the anxiety, etc., in the moment, but this can lead to other complications. Things like depression, which can lead to worse pain, not what you want after surgery, it can lead to some patients never wanting anesthesia or surgery again, clearly dangerous if they ever need surgery again. It can lead to PTSD or hyperarousal states, increased anxiety, chronic fear, sleep disturbances like insomnia or nightmares, and intense loneliness. And it's really important to remember that these aren't just psychological states. Your body keeps score. All of these mental health conditions will manifest in your body as well over time. The mind-body connection is very powerful, and these can all take a serious toll on your cardiovascular health and your brain health. And talking things like heart attacks, strokes, high blood pressure, or even early onset dementia. Now you might be asking, why would any doctor let their patient be aware under anesthesia? It sounds terrible, and it absolutely is. We're not doing it on purpose. To understand why, you need to understand a thing or two about anesthesia, and how it's a very delicate balance between your brain and the rest of your body. 
Your brain has a certain anesthesia requirement to scramble memories so that you don't experience awareness. Your body, however, can only tolerate so much anesthesia before your heart stops working. That's right, anesthesia turns off a lot of your body's important reflexes. I did a video on this before, so check it out. But this means that there's a balance. We can't give you too much anesthesia because your body can't handle it. But if we don't give your body enough anesthesia, your brain might remember things. So it's this balancing act. The disaster setup is if you have a patient with high anesthesia requirements, but a low body tolerance of anesthesia, that is a perfect recipe for intraoperative awareness. So the natural question is what increases your brain's requirements for anesthesia? Anxiety is a big one. Preoperative anxiety can actually increase the requirements of anesthesia for some parts of your surgery. Patients with anxiety are also more likely to be taking psychoactive medications, things like antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication. Those can also increase your anesthesia requirements. And many of those patients may be using other substances as well, things like opioids, alcohol, marijuana, or amphetamines, those will all increase your anesthesia requirements on top of the anxiety. We also believe that obesity may also increase your anesthesia requirements and increase your risk of being relatively underdosed. That's in part because your body may not be able to tolerate as much anesthesia, either because of heart conditions or because of sleep apnea. Lastly, your heart and lung health is super important in reducing your risk of anesthesia awareness. That's because if your heart and lungs can't tolerate the anesthesia, you're more likely to be underdosed and to experience intraoperative awareness. This is why anesthesia awareness is more common in life-threatening surgeries when your heart is in danger, like trauma surgery, open heart surgery, and emergency C-sections. Your body simply can't tolerate as much anesthesia as your brain may need to not remember things. A quick word about sleep apnea. If you're having sedation, you usually don't get a breathing tube because if you're under sedation, you're not supposed to be unconscious. You're not having general anesthesia. When you're under sedation, patients with sleep apnea are more likely to snore because they already snore when they're asleep at home. And that snoring can only get more intense when you have anesthesia on board because this relaxes the tissues in your mouth and throat, your tongue in particular. Untreated or severe sleep apnea in sedation cases means that we can't give you more anesthesia because we risk you not breathing well. That's one of those important reflexes that gets blunted by anesthesia. That's the classic example. I actually had a patient earlier this week who couldn't get more anesthesia because they simply weren't breathing through the dose they were getting. And they were at risk of being underdosed because maybe their brain needed more, but their heart and lungs couldn't tolerate it. Now, there are also some things that increase your anesthesia requirements that you can't so easily change. Things like red hair, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, and hypernatremia. That's a concentration of sodium in your blood. But let's move on to another really important layer that we don't understand too much about. Not everyone that has awareness in the operating room is gonna develop those serious complications that we talked about earlier. That's right, there are some patients that might be aware, but might not feel any pain and might not experience any trauma after the episode. Why is that? We believe that it comes down to three reasons. One is the more likely you are to feel that your life is in danger in that moment, the more likely your brain is to catalog that experience into the trauma category leading to PTSD in the future. That's actually one reason why I call my patients the night before surgery, so they'll know who is taking care of them when they're unconscious under anesthesia so that they feel that they can trust me and they know that they're cared for and guided by me in the most stressful moments of their life. Number two is the environment in which you're experiencing that anesthesia awareness. Take for example a woman who's having an emergency cesarean section. She can hear the cries of her newborn and maybe hear her partner's voice. Contrast that to a woman who's paralyzed and feels the pain of the incision and just hears the voices of a frightened, freaked out operating room staff. One is far more likely to experience the trauma from that awareness experience compared to the other. And number three, Patients that have pre-existing mental health conditions like anxiety, depression, or past traumas and PTSD are more likely to experience those complications that I talked about from anesthesia awareness. So what can you do to minimize the risk of anesthesia awareness and to reduce the risk of complications should awareness occur? The most important is to optimize your mental health. Getting your anxiety under control before surgery not only reduces your anesthesia requirements, but also reduces the risk of awareness should it occur from transforming into one of those serious complications. 
Fortunately, there are so many natural ways to get your anxiety under control before surgery, even if you only have a couple of days or even just a couple of hours. I've talked about these techniques in other videos, but they include things like acupuncture, essential oils, some supplements, I like melatonin in certain patients that I take care of, but you always need to talk to your doctors before surgery before you take any supplements. Breath work, mindfulness-based stress reduction, there are so many natural ways to help control your anxiety even if you only have a couple of minutes before you go under. Another powerful strategy is to bring headphones into the operating room. Ask your anesthesiologist if you can bring headphones into the operating room. That way, you can be listening to music that calms you, helps you feel at peace, or positive affirmations, or quite frankly, whatever you want to help shape your environment when you're under anesthesia. That way, should awareness occur, you are in control of your environment. You're less likely to hear the anxiety-inducing voices and noises around the operating room. You're controlling what's going into your ears. And like we said, the auditory parts of your brain are the most likely to be online if you're underdosed from your anesthesia. It's also super important to reduce your substance use before surgery. I've talked about this in other videos as well, but reducing marijuana and alcohol use and amphetamine use are all very important to not only help your surgery go safer, but to also decrease your brain's anesthesia requirements. Fortunately, there are many safer alternatives to marijuana to help get your anxiety under control before surgery. It's also important to talk to your surgery team before your surgery starts. That way you can begin to build the trust that should intraoperative awareness occur, you're less likely to feel that sense of impending doom and hopelessness because you've already begun to establish trust in your surgery team. And lastly, optimizing your body weight, getting your sleep apnea control, and making sure your heart and lungs are healthy before surgery will increase the amount of anesthesia that your body can safely tolerate to minimize your risk of being underdosed. Even with the best prevention, awareness under anesthesia is still possible. Should it occur though, we fortunately have many safe ways of treating it, both naturally and integrated with conventional psychiatric care. We'll talk about that in an upcoming video. And until then, I want you to remember that you have more power over your health than you've probably ever been told, even against one of the scariest experiences in medicine, things like anesthesia awareness. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you did, be sure to follow and share with your loved ones. And leave comments below and let me know what other secrets you want to know about the human body so that you can control your inner healing potential.